This is the worst of the Dan Lebatard show with the Stugatz podcast. Always moved by our audience. It's been a blessed thing that Miami has given us. So uh, those tickets sold out very quickly, and there will be more put on sale uh, soon. Uh, thank you. My brother and I are doing an event in Miami with music, sports, and art. And uh, thank you guys for supporting that. Greg Cody of the Miami Herald in with us. You're welcome. Yes, yeah, Stugatz, uh, what Stugatz actually did say before we turned the microphones on. I'm like, I was, I was surprised and pleased that they sold out that quickly. And, uh, and Stugatz said, you're welcome. I put it on Twitter. Yeah. The power of the Stugatz army. Dude. Yes. Uh, that, that, I, I would like for this party not to have too much of the Stugatz army. <laughs> so you want me to stop tweeting it? Fragments, I mean, fragments okay. of right. the Stugatz party. <laughs> I don't even know if Stugatz will be there. Yeah. I don't think Stugatz <laughs> will be there. Stugatz isn't on anything in the, uh, in the press releases because he lives so far away from <laughs> things that are made in Miami. Uh, so yesterday what we end up seeing is the first trade, and this is going to be fun to watch, and when basketball started gaining in popularity, we made a lot of fun of LeBron James for that decision. It was polarizing. He did something for charity. It's the most controversial thing he's ever done in his career. And he, he announced where he was going in free agency with a television show. And since then, basketball has exploded into this wonderful spectacle of personalities. And within that, the transaction became bigger than the action where you're spending the off season, you're spending the end of your season. If your team's not any good, trying to figure out how do we land LeBron or his equivalent and what you just saw yesterday. And I know that people are concentrating on Blake Griffin going to Detroit, but I think what you just saw yesterday is that the Clippers. The more interesting part of that story is the Clippers are now trying to get in the LeBron game. Like, right. And they will discard even a Blake Griffin in order to do so. Like that they have decided that Blake Griffin, who many of us would say, if healthy, is a top 25 superstar in the league. This is how little the superstars in even that league matter. There are just not five that matter, basically. Because Blake Griffin has just been traded so that the Clippers can maybe get in the LeBron game. Right. Um, which is really interesting because the Clippers had won seven out of ten. They were playing well. They're a half game out in the Western Conference, but they, they're telling you, yep, don't care nope, about this year. DeAndre, don't care about care. Blake. Everyone's yep. reporting that DeAndre Jordan's going to be next, that they're going to shut Lou it Williams down. Well, Lou yeah. Williams, that they'll be traded before February 8th. But this is when this stuff gets interesting where you see now, it's been a while since we had it, it not since Durant, right? Where it felt like this, where again, it's going to happen where teams are going to try and get in position to be one of the six or seven. can Because you're not just getting LeBron. You know this time it'll be LeBron and friends. Correct. Like, you know this time it's not going to be just – it's going to be LeBron and whatever team he wishes to build. Right. And now you're going to see who's going to start clearing that salary cap space because it's the only way that they can get – like, Ballmer's not going to sit here, pay $2 billion for the Clippers, and say, I'm riding out Blake Griffin, whatever that gives me. No, and and LeBron and friends, there are options this year. I mean, I don't know if Chris Paul would ever go back to L.A. to play with LeBron James for the Clippers, but Paul George is available. Like, LeBron can bring – some serious friends here and put together well, a contender that, very this quickly. This is the first time it's happened, right? This is the first time right now that we've seen someone this clearly publicly get in play for we want LeBron. Yeah, they're going yeah. they're going all in uh, for for what will be LeBron's last big splash. Uh, but I think they splash. are doing a smart thing. Um, Blake Griffin, he's not what he was. I mean, he hasn't been an All Star in three years. He hasn't had a fully healthy season. In four years, he's making $35 million. I mean, I, I think the Clippers are, are doing well. Well, how about this one? If you've been listening to our show for a long time, you know that Stan Van Gundy is one of our most intimate friends, that he is somebody we all text him and tease him and love him, and he left the job with our show. That's what he left. Yes. His uh, his job with our show to go become president of the Pistons and coach of the Pistons. It paid better. And yet yeah, it did slightly. <laughs> slightly. We were just laughing, Stugatz and I, the other day that uh, about an elaborate thing where I was actually paying Stan Van Gundy, but I couldn't tell him that I was paying him because he wouldn't allow it. But local radio was so terrible. It was actually, I'm pretty sure, Greg Cody, you were involved in these negotiations in that we couldn't pay Stan Van Gundy more than we were paying you. Right. And so I had to cover the dis difference personally. <laughs> That's, which is pretty so, hilarious. So I had to run through a program director. Wait a minute. I got two program director stories for you guys. 
I had to run through a program director, like some cash where I'm like, can you just make sure that this check from us doesn't have my name anywhere on it, but just send it to Stan Van Gundy. So I was paying the president of the, of the Pistons just to make sure that he was being properly compensated for doing local radio. Now he wasn't aware of this until a couple of days ago because we were on a group text and, uh, to which he responded was not aware, uncomfortable, but thank you to which I responded, you're welcome. <laughs> That's right. Stugatz again there took, yeah, Stugatz took the credit there as well, said, my pleasure, happy to help. But what I was thinking about with Stan Van Gundy, and the reason I tell you the story is because I just feel bad for his predicament that getting Blake Griffin is a giant deal in Detroit. It's going to be exciting. You never get the the big free agent superstar to go to Detroit and decide to live in Detroit. It's a big deal for him and his franchise, and all of you are yawning at it nationally. You're all looking at what would appear to be Stan Van Gundy headed toward the back end of this contract. Right. And and the best that he can do is land a Blake Griffin. You got to give up a lot to get Blake Griffin. And it's the best you're going to do in Detroit. You can't really do better than Blake Griffin in Detroit than, than getting his contract and forcing Blake to live in Detroit when he doesn't want to live in Detroit. Well, I think that's the interesting part of this because I heard Woj talking about it. And you're right, Dan. Like, Detroit can't attract a free agent in the offseason. The only way they can get a guy like this is by trading for a guy like this. And now you have him under contract for the next four years. Otherwise, you're not coming there. You, you have right. to, you have to draft first and land and a certified superstar in order to succeed that way where you can't get any you can't get in the game unless you overpay for broken Blake Griffin right and and he's still you know he gives that franchise a bounce because he's still a big name and and they've struggled to fill that arena so you know there's going to be an immediate bounce but I just think at this point in his career with his injury history he's a he's sort of a hollow 20 22 point score but it, it, you, it's you can't win a lot with well, him. it's the right play for Detroit though Overspending on yes. Blake Griffin, taking a chance. It's the only way you get Blake Griffin if he's kind of broken. Yep. So you overspend with draft picks and it's, it's Stan Van Gundy pushing all his chips to the table. Cause I told you, remember earlier this season, the Pistons were 11 and four and you were saying the Pistons are good, Dan. And I say Stan says they're not. Right. That he's not winning anything unless he gets a star. I thought that team was going to be so good. The team that they had yesterday. I thought that team was going to be mm-hmm. really, really good with Avery Bradley no, and but Tobias they, Harris. They, they and... gave up a lot to get him, a but ton, they man. got better. They won the trade. Uh, they... I, I, I'd really like their squad and their chances of making the playoffs. Right now, they're the nine seed. They, they'd have a chance to make noise if they had Blake Griffin, Andre Drummond, Avery Bradley, and Tobias Harris. You removed two of those. Right. I know, Mike. But, but he can't get them. I know, I mean, but obviously. Mike, they've been the eight seed the last couple of years. That's going to get Stan fired. He's got to do something. You can't just keep going it limping in as the eight seed five hundred, right. and then you're going to lose to one of the. You're going to lose yep. to the one seed plus, in four games. I don't think that's what they, they lose in four games. Yeah, plus they've lost nine straight. I mean, nine out of ten, eight straight. I'm sorry about that. Well, I but mean, that's the thing. Stan also had to overspend. I feel bad for him having to do that job because he also had to overspend on Reggie Jackson because you can't just let Reggie Jackson leave once a talent like Reggie Jackson, which isn't great, but you've got it in Detroit. It's just hard to keep those people there. I feel bad for teams stuck in the middle like Van Gundy in Detroit because it, it it's such a top-heavy league with five or six elite players who really matter. And the secondary players, the Blake Griffins, they're, they're just not enough. They're just not going to bring I, you where you want to go. I can't believe we're talking about Blake Griffin already as a secondary player. And I can't believe that we're in a situation here where Blake Griffin is being moved. Stugatz, you're clearing out Blake Griffin. To get LeBron James. Of course you are. That is a precipitous fall on the career of Blake Griffin. Are you doing it thinking that somehow, some way, you're thinking maybe you actually have a good chance at getting LeBron James? Um, I think must Otherwise, be. Otherwise, would you Why? not make that no, deal? That right? might, they, no, Doc Rivers, I don't know what Ballmer's saying. I don't know what the agents of LeBron are saying. We've been talking about LeBron for L.A. Maybe we had the wrong L.A. franchise. Like, maybe. This feels like a trade. I don't feel like, I don't feel like you make this trade if you're the Clippers unless you feel like you've got a really reasonable shot at getting LeBron James. And my guess is that you don't, if you're Ballmer, if you're Steve Ballmer paying $2 billion for a franchise, you don't guess at that one so much. You got to talk to somebody and know somebody right. that helps you understand whether LeBron actually wants to be in Los Angeles, wants to be a global entertainment superstar doing movies. Ballmer's going to know these things. My guess is, this is all, Balmer and Doc, I would no, think. But yeah. I, I don't know. Doc less than Balmer. Balmer's not buying a team for $2 billion, watching it languish. He's not going to be a bad public owner. 
that stinks and gets rid of all their star players and doesn't make a big play and and the way to make the big play is you've got to know something. Yeah, you don't you you don't make this deal unless you know you can get in the room with LeBron at least. I also wonder more than that. I I also wonder do you make this deal if Blake Griffin is a really healthy twenty eight year old who's never had an injury history who plays seventy five games every year? If it means you got a shot at LeBron, yes. <laughs> it's crazy that we're there. It really is. Blake Griffin, you know, wasn't that bad a player a couple of years ago. Now he's just cleared to make room for LeBron. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Home Insurance. Getting a quote is easier than ever. Tune in tonight for college basketball action as Vanderbilt battles Kentucky. Coverage begins at 830 Eastern on ESPN Radio, ESPNRadio.com, and the ESPN app. Here's your Sports Center update. The Clippers have traded Blake Griffin, Bryce Johnson, and Willie Reed to the Pistons. For Tobias Harris, Avery Bradley, Boban Marjanovic, and a first and second round pick, the Cleveland Indians will eliminate the Chief Wahoo logo from their cap and jersey sleeve starting in the 2019 season, but will continue to sell merchandise featuring the logo so they can retain ownership of the trademark. That's convenient. 1-800-Flowers.com has the Valentine's gift she's guaranteed to love. Right now, you can get 12 multicolored roses for just nineteen ninety nine, or double it to 24 multicolored roses for only $10 more. To order, go to 1-800-Flowers.com, click the radio icon, and enter code DAN. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. I've got very exciting news. I've got very exciting news. I just got an email that says, I'm in. No charge. Hank Azari is the voice of our tournament. Yeah! Hi, this is Papi. Do you know that my TV show, Highly Questionable, is not only on ESPN2 every day at 4.30 Eastern. It is also available as a podcast. You can listen or subscribe to the Highly Questionable podcast on ESPN app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Don Lebatard. So I say to Cody, I say, you are great at donating other people's time. And he says, that's right. And then I say, and you're terrible at donating your own time. And he's like, that's right. <laughs> What's your point? I mean, somebody's got to be overseer. You're not that oh, person. I am that no, I'm no. a can-do man. You're... Can-do, baby. Doing it. <laughs> exactly. Well put. Stugatz. Why is he better being at uh, being you than you are at being you on the radio? I will. Have like a... he knows that the musical nature of this is that required to doing it. Uh, you to, never to, know. To maximum annoy me. <laughs> this is the Dan Lebatar show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. So Stugatz, tell me your favorite of the giant comic book movies. Uh, what is your favorite? Wow, because of the giant comic book just, movies. Just, it is. It, have we ever seen reviews like the ones that we're getting for Black Panther? Like, have we? Is that is that something that we've seen? The reviews are, uh, you know, will save blockbusters. Really, getting that kind of uh, yes, astonishing. Like something. What well, I, I think Mike would probably know better. I've never been into comics. I've seen some of the movies, but was the Batman with Heath Ledger? Was that one yeah. that was lauded as? Yeah, there, there. I mean, the the first Avengers got lauded. Captain America: Civil uh, Civil War, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. These are these are some examples of some comic book blockbusters that were very well received. But I'm super encouraged by the uh, the Black Panther reviews. That's awesome. Well, I just I haven't seen reviews that are quite like this. In I can't remember when when it comes to one of these movies. Like it's it feels like. And correct me if I'm wrong because I'm certainly no expert on these things. But it feels like we've had. A lot of duds along this front, right? In the last five years? Um, well, certainly on the DC side, Marvel's always pretty much well-received. They they rarely get bad reviews with their big blockbusters. Greg Cody uh, feels a little left out of this conversation. It's okay. Let me throw something in your wheelhouse. Did you see uh, that this guy with the longest-held record in Atari, an infamous Atari player, has been disqualified from his world record? After 35 years, wow! They have figured out. Did you play? Did you play I did. any? I, I, that that was one of the first video games I ever remember playing. Was a, a, sorry, well, I can I can visualize the console and everything. Well, can, you played Pong, correct? Is it Pong? Yeah. Is Pong not the original video game? Is Pong not the very first video game? I don't think it is. I'll you don't think it. it is? 
I don't think it is. No. I was a Ms. Pac-Man guy. I mean, that was my game. Okay. Didn't really ask you that. It's a great game, though, man. Oh, it's fantastic. And it still holds up. Yeah, really and I, I, still I love, love the my, music. I still love... <laughs> so, <laughs> this guy, Todd Rogers, in 1982, he set a world record time of 5.51 seconds in the Atari... 2600 racing game dragster last year speedrunners called that score information into question after a lengthy arbitration process rogers score was removed from twin galaxies an organization that tracks video game records and high scores wait a minute you laugh video games are giant right now this is where yes. this is the starting point video games have never been bigger than they are right now right this is this is the heyday of the video game. Right now, we're in the middle of it. Video games have become a spectator sport, mm -hmm. and the Miami Heat is peripherally involved with video gamers. Mm -hmm. Yet young people need yep. more than one stimuli. There was a uh, a space game released before Pong. Many people will say Pong is the first video game. There is a space game. The company that created Pong will tell you they created a space game a year before Pong. So I'm just okay, telling you, Pong so was there's the a second. controversy. There's a controversy about whether Pong... most people recognize Pong as the original video okay, game. Okay, but there's the a company, controversy. Yes, yes. Nutting Associates had already released their computer space game in 1971. Okay, too bad. Yes, there were two people doing what Paul Revere were doing in different directions. Only one of them got to be Paul Revere. <laughs> so go ahead and eat that. By the way, I just uh, went through the uh, top 100 re uh, reviewed movies on Rotten Tomatoes all time. Five of which are superhero movies. Three of which are comic book uh, superhero movies that were released in 2017. Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok, and Wonder Woman. And were they good? Wonder Woman, I know, got critically... What what were the reviews like on the other two movies? What? Th uh, the Dark Knight and Logan? Uh, I mean... Excellent. Yeah, it's I didn't in like the top Logan. 100 Rotten Tomatoes movies of all time. I, I didn't like it. 99 Logan. and 100. I, di I didn't know the blockbuster needed saving. As a guy who only casually follows moviedom, uh, I thought blockbusters were well, prevalent. Name the, name the last blockbuster you saw. Well, I no, mean, no. I think I think the threat to blockbusters isn't anything other than Netflix and all these other things that are keeping people out of the theater. Okay, that there are. That, that there are, if, that Black Panther, what they're saying when they're saying it will save blockbusters, it will make people not get out of their bed, get out of their Netflix, get out of their iPhones, mm -hmm. get out of, go to a movie theater and save blockbusters by saving movie theaters. Okay. Like, uh, which it can't do, but that's right. what they're talking about. They're talking about this being the biggest movie in the history of these kinds of movies. And when it's critically, because I, I saw what Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman, was considered the high end of all of this above Logan. Mike Logan, Logan is critically People well loved Logan, man. Really? Yeah, yeah I'm Logan, looking at it right now. Logan, while a Marvel movie, it's outside of the Disney-owned Marvel Cinematic Universe, at least until this uh, deal between Fox and Disney gets. Uh, you guys approved. not want to hear any more about this Atari cheater? I do. I'm wondering how he cheated. All right, next. Time for Dan to reluctantly take part in something his two guys couldn't be happier doing. I tried to bring you back there, man. I mean, I gave you the details on the first video game ever. I mean, got yes. stuck on Logan. Guillermo, yeah, I did get stuck on Logan. You're right. Guillermo, put it on the poll. Did you know the Pong was the first video game ever? It's not. And, and also put on the poll, did you love Logan? <laughs> A grown adult man needs to have, at the very least, one good suit in the closet. I don't have very many of them. I've just got jacket tops here. But regardless, if you're not a slob like me, the black tux is someone that's going to help you, even if you are a slob like me. Everyone wants to look as great as their date at a wedding or special event. You really do. Who does it? Guys, the blacktux.com is your answer with high quality rental suits and tuxedos delivered to your doorstep. You don't have to leave the couch. That is the key. It's so convenient. Dan has used them. I've used them. I think just about everyone on the show has used the Black Tux. We all love them. The Black Tux lets you create your look or choose from tons of stylish selected outfits without ever leaving the couch. Stand out at your next event for the right reasons with the Black Tux. We're going to hook you up to get $20 off your purchase. Visit theblacktux.com slash Dan. $20 off right now. Theblacktux.com slash Dan. Hold on a minute. Amin El Hassan, uh, doing a personal show for me, says that he saw Black Panther last night 
It is the blackest blockbuster movie ever. A blockbuster. Yeah. Don Lebatard. Who's the second most famous Frank? Frankenstein. Stugatz. Pretty good. It's also not his name. Frank. No, nobody and calls Frankenstein Stein. Frank. His yes, friends they do. do. Of course yes. his friends do. <laughs> Dracula right. calls him Frankie. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. The Dan Lebatar Show is brought to you by Pennzoil Synthetics, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. Stefan Diggs is going to join us in a half hour. Vikings wide receiver, 11 a.m. Eastern on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. The Clippers have traded Blake Griffin, Bryce Johnson, and Willie Reed to the Pistons for Tobias Harris, Avery Bradley, Boban Marjanovic, and a first and second round pick. The Cleveland Indians will eliminate the Chief Wahoo logo from their cap and jersey sleeve starting in the 2019 season but will continue to sell merchandise featuring the logo so they can retain ownership of the trademark. And finally, Bon Iver's Justin Vernon is furious with the Grammys. He took to social media to voice his complaints, tweeting, absolutely no offense to Mr. Mars, but you absolutely have to be bleeping me. Mr. Mars made a name in the industry by making hits out of hits of yesteryear. SZA, Kendrick, I'd say more. I'd say move on from this bleep show. It's offensive. It's offensive that Bruno Mars won Song of the Year. Offensive. Why is it offensive? Because man? it it's just a laughable song. Laughable. And if you're going to go laughable song, you got to go Despacito. All right. At least make it a popular <laughs> laughable song. I mean, what are you making the rules now? But that's, right. I mean, that's right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Laughable song, Despacito. It's a hit. <laughs> it is. Well, it's the biggest hit in the history of hits. <laughs> Don't ever do that again near me. Thank you. Who's SZA? It's one of Kendrick's artists. Oh. Uh, everyone wants to look as great as their date at a wedding or special event. Now you can with rental suits and tuxedos from theblacktux.com. The Black Tux is your new way to rent online. To get $20 off your purchase, visit theblacktux.com slash Dan. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Lucky for you, that's what I like. That's what I like. Sex by the fire at night. Silk sheets and diamonds all white. Lucky for you, that's what I like. That's what I like. Lucky for you, that's what I like. That's what I like. If you say you want a good time, well, here I am, baby. Here I am, baby. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Tell me what's on your mind. What's on your mind. If you want it, girl, come and get it. All this is here for you. Tell me, baby. Tell me. Tell me, baby. What you're trying to do. Gold jewelry shining so bright. Strawberry champagne on ice. Oh, go bleep yourself. Honestly, it's offensive. I'm offended on behalf of, of, of everyone who's ever made music. Ha! <laughs> that, that's the song of the year. Guillermo, put it on the poll. Should you be offended by any, should you be offended that that's the song of the year? I don't know why this one is the one that I'm fired it's up about. It's so weird, man. Bruno Mars. I he's mean, very talented. He's oh, super so talented. I'm not saying man. he's not. I am not saying he's not super talented. I'm saying that song is garbage. All right, that's fair. I mean, if you don't like that song, you're saying he's talented. You just don't like that song in particular. But he's you like super other so talented. Yeah. There's no disputing that Bruno Mars is talented. It seems like you were disputing that. But no, I'm glad you're not. Uh, well, Song of the Year is a songwriter's award, and he's taking uh, issue with the actual lyrical content. It would appear. It's garbage. I think it's a well-written pop song. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a pop song. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were you were reading the hook. Okay, but if you're gonna do popular pop song, Despacito is an international sensation that is the biggest song in the history of songs. If you're gonna do it by popularity, if that's how you want to do it, if you well, want to make it pop, well, no, that's record of the year, mm -hmm. which is just including production and everything. Like, what's the best song of the year? But song of the year, a lot of people think it's like, oh, what what is this? That, that wasn't. But it's just a songwriter's award. Mm -hmm. I don't feel as strongly about it as you do. That's Does anybody? No. Does anybody <laughs> no in the one world? Is this upset about it. No. Do you remember the no time one. when we translated the lyrics to Despacito? Yeah. yeah. Oh, they're terrible as well. But that's what I'm saying. If you're gonna do, yes. Not only do I remember that, I remember that Allison Turner. And this is this week is the only time that she has been more miserable than she was when she was asked to do this for this song. 
Can we do this with her with the Bruno Mars song from Radio Row when she gets up there shivering and is sitting next to Stephen A. Smith? Can we put her in the uncomfortable position you want her to where sing? she has to do the Bruno Mars song on Radio oh, Row around man. people? It actually, our, our recording sessions with Allison take longer than our recording sessions with Poppy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So here, do you want to hear about this Atari thing, Cody? Yes, I do. All right. So this guy, Todd Rogers, he had a... World record score, Guinness World Book of World Record score of 5.51 seconds in the Atari 2600 racing game Dragster. I think it's it's the longest standing record in video games. <laughs> and, quote, based on the complete body of evidence presented in this official dispute thread, Twin Galaxies administrative staff has unanimously decided to remo- remove all of Todd Rogers' scores as well as ban him from participating in our competitive leaderboards. Twin Galaxy staff said on their message boards, the presented software analysis model conducted concluded that achieving score times of less than 5.5 seconds is not possible under standard and normal play conditions. Well, that's an outrage because you wonder how long did that record stand? Why did that record stand so long? Where was the oversight? Why did it take 35 years to get to the bottom of this? That's what you should be outraged about. Is that, about. What I was, is that how Mars. I sounded about the Oscar yes. song? Yes, yes, yes. All I fair questions, ridiculous. by the way, by Greg. All very fair I sounded, questions. There is no record sacred. Exactly. Sports. This is why I love what Adam Silver's doing. Adam Silver's like turning the whole thing into a dice game. You know what? I'm going to make the All-Star game. I'll give you $100,000 for the winner, $25,000 for the loser. Over here, I want 1% of all wagers made on the NBA. That's what we need from our commissioner. Instead of all these commissioners protecting integrity, this right. commissioner's out here swaggering. Give me give me 1% of all wagers. <laughs> I love that. Did you see, by the way, the Pro Bowl, like how much the players cared towards the end of that game because there was money attached to it? Well, that's uh, <laughs> this was something the fun, that was funny to talk about with Dominique because if you put just a little extra financial incentive on some of these games, I know that most of you say, oh, it doesn't matter to these guys. They're so rich. But Dominique was sort of explaining the competitive nature, the stupid competitive nature of some athletes, the idea that it's not so much that you get the 75000 extra dollars. It's that you took it from the other guy by beating it. Correct. That it does, it's not really the money. The money, right. the money doesn't matter that much. It's, it's really just, I have it because I beat you. <laughs> right. And, and if you're competitive, you're competitive. You want to win a, That's correct. a, a $50 pot playing That's poker. Correct. That's correct. Imagine that game winning shot, how good it feels if Chris Paul thinks he has the $100,000, but then LeBron hits a shot and takes it right That's away. That's correct. Yes. That is, that is, that is the joy of it. But that is, I love that this is what he, I mean, Adam Silver's like, all right, let's make it a dice game. <laughs> 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 Time for some more ads. It's funny because uh, Goodell was on with Golik and Wingo today, and they were asking him about Adam Silver and the gambling stuff. And <laughs> oh, my God. Goodell Did he made sprint it very... away from the phone? Well, just, hey, we're going to – it was very clear. Stand on the sidelines, and let's see how the NBA does That's right. It. <laughs> we'll just be followers on this one. Yeah, see if there's an oil well they spring and then run under it. I, that's Jerry Jones must be so mad at Goodell. Wait, Jerry Jones is sipping that Johnny Walker blue. And, and, and he's looking, he's sipping the Johnny Walker blue and he's like, wait a minute. We can get into gaming? Why is basketball? Why is that guy who looks like a haunted house butler? Why is that guy getting basketball into gaming? And what's Goodell doing? I've been, I've been keeping track since that Don Van Nata piece on Jerry Jones. You haven't been able to mention Jerry Jones without mentioning Johnny Walker Blue. Yeah, that's because, that because, up. yes, because the, in that piece, Don Van Nata, he got very close to Jerry Jones. And whenever he was very close to Jerry Jones, the scent was Johnny Walker Blue. It was at breakfast. It was in bathrooms. It was in lounges. It was when he was winking at people. It's when he was discovering oil. It's when he was cheating. He can wink at people. <laughs> that's got to be a tough test. Ah, that's a funny joke. <laughs> Cash more of the Dan Levatar show with the Stugats, 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPN U. Dan Levatar. You could get the delicious succulent ham shank or butt portion. They said butt portion. And I thought to myself, I'd eat the butt, but I don't want to know that I'm eating 
the butt portion. Stugatz. Is the butt portion a delicacy of yeah, some sort? It very much is. I can testify to this. Uh, the cut of meat, when I make pulled pork, slow cook a pork roast to make pulled pork, the cut of meat I use is called the Boston butt. So it's a delicacy. I eat butt all the time. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. This guy might be the most underrated dude in the league. He might be the most underpaid dude in the league. If he's not, it's his teammate, Phelan. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so I want to ask him, I want to start in the obvious place with Stefan Diggs. He's uh, with us on behalf of Old Spice's Red Collection of Premium Scents. Learn more about the Red Collection at OldSpice.com. Which is worse on an award stage, <laughs> Stefan, getting up there and yeah. hailing Satan after a bunch of gospel songs, getting up there and saying, hail Satan, or pretending to wipe your rear end with the award they just gave you? <laughs> which, which, oh, no. which is, the, I know, but you got to answer it. I, I know, you don't, you don't know. One, we can't man. know. It's very yeah. difficult, but you got to pick one, and yeah. I'm not going to go any further with you until you do. Probably hailing Satan, I guess. Okay, yeah, probably. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. give him the game right. show. Yes, 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 hooray. Yes, that is correct. Right answer, right yes, answer. Yes, that is the yeah. correct answer. Uh, can you answer this question for me? Would you agree that Sam Bradford looks like a kid dressed as Sam Bradford for Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody says that, especially because he wears those large, the large jersey. Yeah. Everybody says that his, uh, his pants look like they don't fit, and his jersey is just a, like, it's just like the Halloween costume. You guys are dead on this morning. All right. Does he look like a frozen FaceTime conversation? <laughs> <laughs> you guys got the good he does, morning. right? Yeah, he does. All right. How, this one's a tough one, though. Does he look like a guy who, while sitting at the dinner table with his wife and kids, gets a text from his girlfriend saying she's pregnant? Now, I'm not saying he would do that. I'm just saying, does he look, does he like, look like it? it? Yes. I'm not saying he would do that. Just does he look like somebody that would happen to? Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. I like Diggs, man. You guys, yeah. you guys, you guys better not make fun of my guy. That's not man. Well, we would never do that. We're making fun of them, and you're yeah. agreeing. With you know, them. he's your guy. <laughs> it, um, what are you I doing here? <laughs> uh, what are you doing here? Uh, do people understand how good you are? Like, I really don't feel like the league understands, or maybe they do this year. They're, your peers do, but does the country? Uh, I don't know, man. It's one of those situations where. You know, it's a toss-up. You know, I don't really do it too much for them, so I'll, I'll never really make that a priority. But, you know, maybe one day, you know, I'm not really worried about it. You know, we just got to we gotta work on winning and, and trying to get to that bowl, man. This year we got pretty close, and, you know, we got high hopes. So maybe next year. Well, what did that 61-yard touchdown catch to get you into the NFC title game, what did that do for you personally in terms of your brand and just you getting the credit you deserve? I mean, personally, it's huge, you know, but, you know, more importantly, like my organization and my team, you know, it put us in a position to do some special things. So for them, it went very, very far. But for me, you know, it's uh, it's done some great things, especially almost giving my mom a heart attack. But she's all good now. She's alive and well. <laughs> Wait a minute. What uh, happened there? What happened? Right, tell us what happened there. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> You guys just want all the fun, all the good stuff, don't you? Yeah, yeah, all the best. Yeah. yeah, I called my mom right after uh, right after the game, and she's talking to me, saying, uh, "Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I almost had a heart attack." I said, "Mom, are you okay? Uh, the game just got over. I know, I know we won. I know you're excited, but I'm gonna need you to calm down. I'm worried about you." And she said, uh, "She said, no, nah, I'm worried about you. What are we doing now? Now bring your butt home." I said, "All right, I'm coming home, mom." All right, all right. What What were you thinking on the on the last drive? You thought the game was over, right? You thought it was over. No, no, I, no, I never think the game's over, big guy. Especially uh, before we went out, my coach told us we had 30 seconds to score, and I felt like we had a we had a good chance to get a field goal. I didn't, I wasn't thinking about scoring. I was trying to, more importantly, just you know, kind of like get in the position to kick a field goal so we can keep playing, but. Uh, some other things happened transpired, whereas, though, you know, I got an end zone, so I was pretty happy about that. I got a question for you. When you're meeting somebody who feels like they should, you should know their name, but you don't know their name, uh, What what is the phrase that you go to? Like, handsome, chief, what is the phrase that you go to when you don't know someone's name? Uh, it all depends. Like, if I call you, uh, if I call you big guy or boss, that's just a safe way. 
Yeah, right. see, because I caught you because you just did it to me. Oh. And I trapped you, and I'm happy to do it. Well, maybe he well, knows your well, big, though. Well, I'm so sorry. Well, I'm so sorry, big guy. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> He's with us on behalf of Old Spice's Red Collection of Premium Scents. Learn more about the Red Collection at OldSpice.com. Are you slathered in it right now? Are you walking around like the Mall of the Americas slathered in scents? Yeah, I, I got it in my hand right now, just in case anybody's asking, anybody wants to. You know, once a whiff, you know, I got it. I got it on deck for him. What, what a story, uh, Old Spice. I mean, that used to be the old guy's cologne. My father wore Old Spice, and now it's rebranded itself as a hip thing. Amazing. It, oh, it's so it's so crazy because no question there. You know, everybody everybody knows the red bottle. Everybody knows the red yeah, bottle. That's, that's right. <laughs> a classic piece of Americana. <laughs> <laughs> you have a question? Do you have a question? No, you're just, just giving your opinion. Just talk, listen, you're just giving your opinion no, on Old Spice. This is what Super Bowl week is all about. Greg is just talking deodorant with Stefan Diggs. Okay, That's what it's Stephon, all about. Right, yeah. is it? Stefan and I share an appreciation of Old Spice. We're like yeah. uh, we brothers go. in arms here. All right, there we go. <laughs> so, uh, so how does this work, uh, Stefan? Like uh, they say to you, Old Spice. Hey, here's an amount of money. Go to Radio Row, wander around the Mall of the Americas, and and we'll pay you a lot of money. No, nah, they they more so, you know, for uh, my situation, they reached out to uh, my people. I've done something, I've done stuff with Old Spice before, so I'll, this is not my first time. I like working with those guys. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, it's a it's a brand that you you're lucky to be with. You know, as as you know, Old Spice been around for a very long time, so you know, I'm I'm just lucky to be in a situation representing them, trying to smell good as, as well. You know, Stefan, I do a weekend show. We've had Kyle Rudolph on that show many times, and he has told me to keep you out of the kitchen because you have almost burned your house down. Can you share that story with us? Really. Oh yeah, yeah. I had a. Uh, it wasn't all the way my fault. Like you know, like one of those situations where you let left the stove on just a hair, and a napkin was kind of close to it. And that's all I'll say about it. But you know, uh, I can actually cook if you guys want to come over. Okay, but wait a minute. The burning of the house down. You you, you wandered <laughs> away from that story. Like what happened? <laughs> I'm not going into detail about that. That was that's in the past. Can okay, we not talk about the past. In the past. <laughs> <laughs> so it's that 61 yard catch that you made when we talked to you about that. You had no issues there, man. That's what we're here about. The good things, the good things in the past, and the bad things in the past. We did the bad things back there. All right. Do you think? Do you think that Giselle is running the Patriots from her bedroom? Um, did she trade? Chance? Yeah, there is yeah, a chance. There is a chance. There, yes. there is a chance. Yeah. We should be looking into this more. All right, yes. all right wait a minute. Let's, we're playing a game show with Stefan Diggs, and you got to be right with your answer. It's called Gun to Your Head. Gun to Your Head yeah. is the name of the game show. Oh, I, I hate this game. Already. No, no, no it's but it's, game. Game. it's brought game. to you by Old Spice Red Collection of Premium Scents. Learn more about the Red Collection <laughs> at OldSpice.com. Yes or no, Stefan Diggs of the Minnesota Vikings. Giselle is the reason Garoppolo got traded. I don't know, man. No, no, that's not it. Whoa, well, you lose. Know. Loser game show sound. Bang. You, you lose. What's the single most important thing the ego <laughs> have to do to beat the Patriots? Uh, you want to hear that again? You want to hear it again? <laughs> hold, hold, on on hold on a second. Hold on, hold on. What's the single most important thing the ego have to do to beat the Patriots? Get pressure on Tom Brady. Very good. All uh, right. Yes, thank you. Yes, Stephon Diggs, yes. ladies and gentlemen. Stephon Diggs. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There we oh, go. you stink at the Giselle game. <laughs> yes or no, you think she told Tom, Tom, look, I know, I know what it's like to be an old, uh, older supermodel, an aging supermodel. We can't have uh, the young ones around here. Get Garoppolo out of here. And then he did the power thing to Belichick and all that. You agree with that, right? I can't agree with that. I have no idea what's going on. All right, very good. Thank you to Stefan Diggs from Old Spice. Don Lebertard. Green Acres is the place to be. Farm living is the life for me. Stugats. I just enjoy it. Paint house view. Cody just bailed. This is the Don Lebertard show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. We will stump the meach here with a variety of Stugats mispronunciations, but I love to talk to John Amici about things that are difficult to talk about. I'm telling you, the video that went viral on Twitter over the weekend, because you've been offline, was fantastic. And as a father, talking about kids and the parents and the pressure parents put on their kids to play sports and really don't talk to the kids because they're at an age where the kids can't decide for themselves, 
It was so well said by Meech, well, and for, it resonated so much with me. All right. Well, forgive me for not having heard it. Meech, can you give us, uh, and thank you for being on with us, can you give us uh, those no words? No problem. Uh, yeah. Can you explain it to us? The potted summary? Yes. Yeah. It was Essentially, it's the idea that, that sometimes as adults, as parents, we are so passionate about sports that we grew up in. We, we mythologize our experience in sports. We forget any bad experience and only remember with, with great acuity the good things that have happened. And as such, we want those great experiences for our kids. But we're so passionate about our sport that we lose objectivity. We, we pretend that stuff that happens in sport that we, we kind of, it sets off our spider senses. We, we have a sense that it's not right. The way that coach is treating that player, the way that administrator is, is allowing a coach to do whatever they want. We kind of let it go because we, we believe with all our heart that sport is always good. It always has the, our kids' best interests at heart. And we forget that sometimes sport just has its own best interests at heart. That, well, sometimes what it's best at is self-preservation. Um, at the expense of the athletes, at the expense of the young people, at the expense of any of the participants. For those of you who don't know, John Amici, longtime NBA player, he's a clinical psychologist. He's a he's a leader, renowned around the world for helping companies, uh, you know, fix their leadership situations. So the situation at Michigan State, John, you went through this at Penn State. You saw some of this happen. The situation at Michigan State is. It, should everyone get swallowed in those flames just because of the nature of the crime? I don't, I, see, I don't think everybody should get swallowed in the flames. I do think we sh- everybody who has played a part, uh, you know, I, I, one of the things I mentioned in the videos that Stu got saw is, is that sometimes people have this purposeful amnesia around incidents, uh, and they let little things go because they think oh it's only a small detail it it doesn't really mean anything in the big picture and and then when you look uh when you look at in history when you look back you suddenly realize that some of the things that are in the details that these young women have have talked about uh, are so egregious on their own that you you can't understand how they happened i mean th- there's a, there's a paragraph in one of the one of the evidence giving elements where a young lady uh, who, has, who we know now has been subject to abuse, is asked to sign a card for the man who's been suspended for her abuse. And you just wonder how that can possibly happen if the best interest of the young person is at heart. There's a lot of people here at, at Michigan State, just as at Penn State, who saw stuff and then did that thing where they plugged their ears and looked towards the sky and pretended nothing was happening. They protected the sport. They protected the reputation, supposedly, at the expense of the young people, and, and people like that should go down with this ship. Meech, kind of a loaded question here, but I put you in charge of fixing this, uh, preventing that from happening again. What are you doing? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a massive problem. So the, I mean, uh, people will hate this answer. Part of this is we have to rethink how we look at sport, right? We have to stop mythologizing it, pretending that it's always good. It is not always bad, but what it is is an empty vessel. So we have to really scrutinize the people who are involved. And that doesn't mean that the people involved are all abusers or pedophiles, but they are too often people who look reasonable but are willing to let things go, individual things go. We have to create a vigilance here. The same When I was at Penn State, for example, I got called into, I got reprimanded by the NCAA for taking coffee from the coach's office. I would walk into the coach's office and just pour myself into one of those big thermos cups before I went to practice in the, before I went to classes in the morning. The NCAA, uh, we were, we were called up for that. The NCAA, uh, compliance officer pulled me into the office and said that this is not allowed and this is a, this is a warning. Now, What's amazing to me is if we can have that level of vigilance over supposed <laughs> cheating, right. how is it that when somebody does a barehanded pelvic exam on a woman, yeah. on, a, on a young woman in under scholarship, that when she complains about it, they get mansplained, essentially, that, that this is fine? If you can catch me drink, t- taking very bad coffee out of my coach's office, <laughs> then surely we should be able to check yeah, fair to make sure fair that enough. women aren't being yes, abused. Fair enough. Uh, John Amici with us on ESPN Radio. Do you believe, as a, cl- as a clinically trained psychologist, do you believe that uh, that pedophilia is a mental illness? Oh, boy. There is, uh, 
there is there is a lot of evidence to suggest that that people have uh, elements at least of of the predilection towards certain types of behaviors including elements of pedophilia at a very young age an age that's so young that it can't be explained by pornography or any of the other common ideas so there is some element of that that does not mean that because there's some predilection within that person that they are devoid of responsibility. But it does mean that for organizations and institutions, they have an additional responsibility to make sure that they spot sophisticated predators like NASA, like Sandusky. Me just throwing them in prison in general population. Is that the right way to deal with? Or is it the best way? Is, is it's it the, the best. best it's the best we've got because you have to keep this away from the playgrounds. But is it the best way? You have to keep them away from from their victims potentially, especially when when we know that there's some element of this that's a, that's a, that's probably pre wired into them. But it's the the question is does it is the best way to keep them away from the people to lock them up? Yes, if you're actually trying to solve the problem in the individual, we know prisons aren't there to to help people repair their lives. They're there to keep them separate from uh, a mainstream population. So. Prisons aren't designed, especially nowadays, they aren't designed to try and rehabilitate. So, no, you're not going to get rehabilitation out of that situation. But the reason that I ask you the question is because if this isn't the best way to handle it, maybe it is the best way to handle it, it's the best we've got, it is the worst place to put a pedophile. And maybe the pedophile loses all, it may, maybe the mental illness person loses all of their rights once there are consequences. But I wonder... Uh, that people get so angry about these crimes, understandably, and should, that I wonder if the best way to go, Meech, is to just throw it into prison because you're not actually uh, curing the disease of cancer. You're just cutting out one tumor and putting it in jail, and that makes you feel better, but you're not actually uh, eliminating these crimes. Look, I mean, this, this we have to distinguish between what what... what the outcome that we're looking for is if we're looking to remove people from the possibility of hurting others then prison is is an answer if you're if you're looking at rehabilitation and i frankly i don't think anybody's looking at rehabilitation in this in this particular scenario then it's not necessarily the the best answer but at the same time don't mistake the idea that somebody has a, a some form of innate predilection towards uh, deviant behavior to to the fact that they don't have any choice there is a choice. There is a bridge mm -hmm. between mindset and mm -hmm. behavior mm -hmm. that is in someone's control, however difficult. If anybody else out there, like me, is constantly on trying to lose weight, they know how difficult it can be to bridge that mindset of, I'm going to stay on a diet when faced with pancakes. It, it, it's it, Sometimes even that is a bridge too far. So you can imagine for people who have very different, very deviant, very antisocial behaviors that feel innate and programmed how very difficult that is but it's hard to have real uh, sympathy there when what we should really be focusing on is the fact that an institution has facilitated a sophisticated mm -hmm. predator mm -hmm. by their inaction by their oversight by their lack of oversight and their lack of vigilance that's where people's ire should be there, that an yeah, entire institution no that. that can catch you with a cup of coffee mm -hmm. can't catch you when you are doing bad pelvic exams all right we cannot uh, segue gracefully into the lighter stuff that we're going to do with meets where we do mispronunciations <laughs> so we'll do it without grace this way what's the single most important thing the ego have to do to beat the patriots uh that's a really good question um because you. as you know i'm very up on my football harder than any I we've just, asked you during this conversation it is harder yeah. I, I just know that what i'm looking for is for tom brady to break the 51 year quarterback curse i want to see if he can become the first quarterback to pull off uh having the the, the largest number of passing yards and win the super bowl Okay, that all is right. a terrible, so terrible answer. Just terrible. That's all I got. Analysis. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Don Libertard. Gordy Nelson uh, had a goose egg. Unbelievable. What are the odds? Money in the bank, that guy normally. <laughs> Best Nelson since Ricky Nelson in the 60s. Stugatz. Hands up if you remember Ozzy and Harriet. Put them up. This is the Don Libertard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio.
All right, so we continue our Super Bowl coverage by talking to John Amici about what's going on at Michigan State, and also, and all, your answer was just terrible. You didn't. I still don't know why the Eagles, what the Eagles need to no. do to beat the Patriots. Right, right. right. You just gave. Uh, an, well, how would I know? All random, I did was pull up a page. It's not the point. Regardless, I just pulled up a page and that, read what I saw. That wasn't obvious at all. Yeah, but you didn't read it well. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's. Uh, he doesn't know much about American football, so let's uh, let's stump him uh, here. He's Mike. How many do you think he's going to? get here we always go five with me we always go five i think he might get one all right so these are in order to win he's got to get three because usually the first one is a softball so what mike is saying here is he's got no shot after the first one i think so here is the first who got mispronunciation fine uh (laughs) we're starting there let's hear it again fine uh that's easy easy fine uh fine uh Fine it up. I got nothing. All right. Um, I, I'm gonna, well, you're uh, nothing? You're quitting on, on, on the first? You, you got to guess. Wait, 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 for it, wait for it. Fine it up. I'm guessing finding. Fine it up. And uh, just a stumble, like you hit a I speed bump. finding, but I think there's two words in there. I think there finding is. Out. You never know. That's one of the conundrums. Can I guess? Finding out. Let's go yes, with that. Yes. Oh, I think it's. Good. I think it's fighting off. Oh, finding out I, is I good. I said fired up. Sorry, you're all wrong. That's actually finally. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Fine it up. Oh, for the love of it's God. Much, just for terrible. the love of just God, it's just not fair. <laughs> Fine it up. How is that finally? Could, no human being can That's do that. That's not right. Yeah. That's the easy one. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Number two for stump the meach. Total. Oh, I know that one. I think I, think I do. Oh, I think come on. No, I think I know this one. I think I know it too. Yeah. Total. <laughs> is it possible that Scott totally? was trying to say totality? I think I was trying to say totality. Meech's guess is totally. That's close, judges. Meech. Meech, what's your guess? Final answer. Let let it him hear it is... again. Let him hear it again. Total. See now, I think I hear totality, but I don't believe you've ever used the word totality. <laughs> <laughs> um, totally. Oh, ah, you should have gone totality. Oh, oh, Mitch. oh Mitch. what a punch Mitch. in the esophagus right there! Uh, I stand the, corrected. You have attempted to say totality. In I, the past. I, attempted. You're right, but I still haven't used right, it. He, he has <laughs> attempted and failed. Uh, third option here on stump the meat. Warm. Oh, for the love of God! Oh, God, oh my God! That was just a vocal. That was just a. Oh my. Warm. <laughs> I, th- I think I got See, is that just warm? I think it might be warm, but it can't be that obvious, can it? Wait, Meech, is that your guess? Warm. That's my guess. Warm. It is warm. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Woo, nice. He's late back. rally. He's You'd be doing leg. so well right now if you had gotten totality as yes. recommended. Still in the game, though, Meech. Still in the game. Mm. Yep. All right, here we go. The fourth money ball for Stugat's mispronunciation. I did that. Oh, for the love of God. <laughs> You gotta be kidding me. I think I know it. I think I know it. it. I think that. Is that a word? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. minute. That is the Emancipation Proclamation. I think that. I think I know it. I think that. I almost think it's like three words. Oh, it is. It is three words. It is three words. I think I know them too, man. I think that. I did that. Close, close. I think that. Oh, oh, I, oh I said that first. Damn it! <laughs> Mitch cares about this game yes, more than anything. He's been so close. <laughs> I that. All right, so and finally, and this Mike always makes this one impossible. I can't even imagine. In the case that if, if Mitch was close, this is where Mike buries him. Mitch, I'm telling you right now, if you get this, you win the game. All okay? right, I don't know what this okay, is, but okay. let, uh, yes, you can have this. You're one for three, but if this, you get it, you no, win. No, yes, this yes. is for everything. You could be 5-0 and oh if you get this. Oh, for the love of God. (laughs) (laughs) Mike, do you have tight end coach back there? Do you have somewhere in there tight end coach? Because I believe the tight end coach was the hardest one we've ever done in the history of this game. We're going to give, I don't know. We're going to give Meech a moment to gather himself. Yes, yes. Hold on, Meech. All right. So, uh, even even when you know what I'm saying, Dan's telling you on the front end, right. tight ends coach, you still don't yes. know. No, this is going to be an impossible one, and I put Mike in a bad position by having him go through the entire library to find tight ends coach. This is how it came out of Stugatz's mouth. 
<laughs> so yes, that's right. That, that's right. That right there is. You can hear it though. That, that, that right there it. is tight ends coach. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. That's changed my mind about this one. Then right. let's hear it again. What? <laughs> it's a linebacker coach. What? 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 Taunt him. What? Taunt him. That's not helping. Taunt him. What? 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 What is it simpler than that? Is sounds, what if? It sounds like well, a song. Well, it sounds like a snap count, too. Beach, what'd you what, say? What, what, what? Is it what if? Ooh, I'm sorry. That is job. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. Oh, wait a second. Let's hear that again. What? Oh, yeah, that's job. Of course. Stop. <laughs> I still got one and new boat. Time for some more ads. Um. Thanks for playing, Meech. Another <laughs> successful loser you are. Don't forget, you can hear more of my son's Dan and his two weekdays starting at 10 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPN U. Dan Lebatard. <laughs> Stugatz. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. We love his work. Kenny G with us again as has become a Super Bowl tradition. We have fallen in love with this man. He's told us a lot of great stories. A couple just paid for him to play 45 minutes. A husband, a wife, a child, a hotel room in Vegas. He did a private show like that. He's told us stories. Uh, and now, Kenny, thank you for being on with us again. Um, can you tell us the craziest way a fan has tried to get into Kenny's life? Uh, well, I, I do get to see some uh, Polaroid pictures in uh, in um, hotel gyms when guys tell me that they've done some things with their significant other to my music, and they show me pictures of it, and I I, I don't mind that. Okay, that's wow. all right. That's uh, yeah. so you so you you wait a minute. Go on. You like this <laughs> to be just in the gym working out, and a guy comes over and says, "Look at what I made love to to your music." Something like that. Yeah, they'll show me some pictures. Yeah, listen, here's here's a nice picture of my whatever, and <laughs> you know we were using your music when we did whatever. And what's the typical response from you after yeah, that happens? I mean, how do you, do you why do you say you don't mind that? I would mind that. I, you give him a fist, fist pound, you walk around, you're like, I'm, yeah, I'm just trying to get my sprints in. What is it? <laughs> well, my reaction is, do you have more pictures to show me? Okay, very good. So you're very receptive. Uh, you're you're very, dirty. Very receptive. Yeah, Kenny very G is very. dirty. Also, but that story stinks in terms of backstage shenanigans for a star musician. Like that. that I know. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I'm a sax player. What, what do you what do you expect okay. them to do? Right. Okay, so it doesn't work that way for you though. But you're no, no, nah, not 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 like that. No, I'm not like a big rap star where I'm sure they have some serious stories. But that's kept me out of the news. I think. Uh, yeah, I guess we can look at. You're it wondering if he has groupies and stuff like yeah, well, that. Why right? wouldn't Kenny G uh, have I, groupies? I would imagine that he would, especially yeah. Kenny G. I, I, yeah. I don't know why. I don't understand. Even can you explain? I, it, the G stands. You're saying the the sax is you know it's sexy, like. I mean, I know it's sexy. Um, I don't know. You know, maybe who knows? Maybe it's the music. Maybe the music's just too. Too mellow and beautiful, and it doesn't uh, bring that out of people. I don't know, which is fine by me. I'm, I'm happy to do the music that I do. I understand. I'm not judging you. It's just, I, is anyone else surprised <laughs> by this? Gam, I'll put it on the poll at Levitard Show. I feel show. judged. I feel a little judged. Well, I, I'm sorry. I'm judging sorry, you, sorry, and, but sorry. I'm just surprised to hear that uh, that Kenny G has not parlayed his saxophone success into uh, magical groupies. Well, I mean, well, maybe he has. I think it's just not, you know, they're n it's not backstage at a concert. I mean, Kenny, I'm sure you parlayed that's it not, into some good times, right? <laughs> uh, you better have, Kenny. When you, when, you, when you say the word parlay, are we starting to speak French now? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> you put the lay in parlay, Kenny. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's good. Uh, thank hey, you. I'm like a writer. <laughs> Used to be. <laughs> that was good. That was a great one right there. Good. <laughs> thank yeah. you. It took a while. Kenny G with us. On ESPN Radio, um, I what are you pointing to there, Mike? What are you pointing to? You got a song for Kenny G? What's the single most important thing the <laughs> oh, Eagles have to do no, to beat the Patriots? No, we can't do that no, again no, to not him. Yet, not yet. No. Wait, is that it? Am I, is this over now? No, already? no, it's <laughs> no. never over, Kenny. No, we want to talk well, to you listen, forever. I, I I see where this this conversation is going. So let me give you a little bit of um, 
a little a little bit of tidbits here. So we were talking yesterday about flying, right? We were talking about flying an airplane. So I do have a little airplane that I fly, and the name of the airplane, it's made by De Havilland of Canada, and the plane is called a Beaver. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, Kenny, you're dangerous. Look how happy he is. Look how happy Kenny He's G is. He's working blue. <laughs> now I'm G- happy. <laughs> Kenny G is working blue. I can't imagine why when the ladies weren't lined up backstage. Uh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had, I, Stugatz was quiet for five seconds. It was awesome. How, I, how does this work? This is what I also don't understand. You're flying your own private planes. How are there not groupies? I don't mean to badger you about this. <laughs> Wait, don't you want to ask me more questions about the beaver? Okay, fine. <laughs> Tell me more about the beaver, Kenny. Okay, so this airplane is called the Havilland Beaver. It's a it's a great plane. It's got amphibs on it, which means that it lands on water, it lands on land. And the great thing about flying this plane, it's a vintage plane. It's a beautiful plane. Like, if you ever saw that movie, like, what is it called, Six Nights, Seven Days, Six Nights, with Harrison Ford, that's the same plane. So when this lands... I, notoriously, I mean, every time I land, somebody on the radio says something like, nice beaver. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have a comeback line. If you're ready, if you're ready I'll we are. I don't know if we're ready. Are we ready? This is Kenny G on Disney Radio, but let's see if we're ready. Oh, wait, should I not be talking like this? No, no that's fine. Yeah, it's we fine. Love it. I love that Kenny G is working blue. I'm going to follow you wherever this goes. <laughs> so if this ends us all, I'm good with that. I'm not. Okay, but this is all this is all legit. This is the Havilland Beaver. If people say nice beaver, they always say to me, and my pick, my comeback line is, "Thank you." Just had it waxed. <laughs> uh oh, am I over? Is that it? <laughs> no, we're off the air now. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> what do you mean? You got the Wait, highest honor of the show? I mean, Are we over yet? <laughs> I just, this is the part that I, and I know I'm stuck on it, Kenny, and I'm sorry to bother you with it, but you're, you're, no, you're, you're, you're landing an amphibious plane in the water. You're getting out and playing sexy sax music that sells 12 million copies when it's Brazilian night. Amphibious, uh, amphibious, that's a fun. It is. I didn't say it correctly, but it's amphibious. And uh, You should land wherever you want to land, and there should be groupies awaiting you, is all I'm saying, Kenny. Thank you. I appreciate that. So you know, that's that's great. I'm glad you're on my side about that. That's wonderful. I, I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling loved to this morning by you. you. This is great. All right. This is of- shocking to us. I mean, it really is. It's shocking. Okay. I, I, Dan, I'm with you. I, I figured he just had groupies that came backstage after every concert. Okay. I mean, he's put sexy. It on the pole, Guillermo. Yeah, he is sexy. We'll talk to you uh, tomorrow. Okay, Kenny. Okay. Sounds good. All right. All right very good. Hey, still got once a new boat. Time for some more ads. The strangest interview yet with uh, Kenny G. There. Is it? I feel like it was. Uh, yeah. Was that re- not enjoyable? Did you guys not enjoy that? No, uh, I was fine. Uh, are we running out of I things really to talk like about that with him? Guy. Yeah. I feel like we're delighted by him. Yeah. So we just like being his company. And he and he, and and Mike did it right when he just did the fake Alan Thick. Fake Alan Thick was proudly cheesy. This is a hard thing to pull off. It's a hard thing to pull off. Not many people do it. Proud cheesy, proudly cheesy, and and. And great. Yeah, he also had the exact same routine about waxing a beaver. No, no, you're good. The, exact the, right, same routine. The exact, the exact same routine. Yeah. But would you agree that that's a tough thing to pull off, pull off? The the guy who is who knows he's giving you a little bit of cheese and is enjoying giving you a little bit of cheese and it's funny and everyone likes the guy. Uh yeah, that's very difficult. That was pull. Alan he Thick. He does it well though, man. That's that was Alan Thick, man. Oh, no doubt. Kenny has Kenny G replaced Alan Thick as our Beloved friend of the show? Most beloved friend of the show? Oh, Cody's going to get mad at this again. No, that's a high honor to replace Alan Thicke. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, God rest his soul. Thank you, Greg. Are you upset, though? It had to be said. Why would I be upset? It's good that you let his soul rest, that God and you agreed to let his soul rest. Blink! Allow me to quote. I don't know what happened. What happened is this is what happened. He got very excited about soccer the first hour of the show. He talked a lot, and he's just petered out since then. Yeah. He forgets that he's talking into the microphone. He got out all of his enthusiasm. He's got nothing left in the tank. <laughs> like it, He I, peaked at 9.30 well, a.m.? I'm, I'm on a word count, and so when I run out of words, uh, I have to budget them. Oh. Shockator! He'll get in the penalty box. Oh, no. We don't have a penalty box anymore, do we? Yes. Go get in the penalty box, right. please. That's fine. I got my sandwich half eaten out there anyway. All right.
<laughs> He's the show killer. That's what my father was shouting there. <laughs> show killer! You're having such a good show, you were. I mean, right up until... I mean, serious, the 9 o'clock hour was informed, as informed as you've ever been. No, what happened is... Then the you first, didn't speak no, in the 11 o'clock first hour. first segment of the show, <laughs> right. he was excited about soccer and MLS. He came in with his media pass, and he gave us 15 glorious minutes, and it's all he had in the tank. He's done. <laughs> Go sit in the penalty box. He's so mad at you right now. I mean, but come on. He's been unusually terrible the last two segments, hasn't he? Don Libertard. Come in here and tickle. Hurry up and tickle him till the end of the well, segment. My doctor, uh, Dr. McGillicuddy said this could be bad oh, for my for heart. The- <laughs> could be bad for my heart. Stugats. <laughs> having a heart attack. <laughs> tickle him. Tickle him more. Tickle him more right to the end of the segment. Heart attack in it. This is the Don Libertard show with the Stugats on ESPN radio. So Tom Brady may or may not have gotten Jimmy Garoppolo traded, depending on what you want to believe. But let me read this story to you from the New York Post. Megan Kelly, evidently, according to the New York Post, threw an Olympic fit when NBC offered the job of anchoring next month's Winter Olympics opening ceremony to Katie Couric. Sources have clu- exclusively told Page Six. Television insiders say that Kelly insisted when signing her $23 million a year contract with NBC last spring that she could not be forced to do special events such as the Winter Games in South Korea. But once Today Show vet Matt Lauer, who usually helmed special coverage, was ousted in November over sexual misconduct allegations, Kelly assumed she was next in line for the plum assignments. All the stuff that happens in sports, all the stuff that happens at $23 million a year with uh, Megyn Kelly and Katie Couric, like these are all very human things, are they not? It doesn't matter the amount of money that sports tries to place these things within a team construct, but within that team construct, you will find all sorts of Megyn Kellys and Katie Couric's that don't want to be on the same team. Right, ego gets in the way, of course, mm-hmm. yes, that's natural. I know, but you, you're asked to manage it in sports in a way that will we will rain down judgment when it is the most normal thing in the world. No matter how much money Megyn Kelly makes, she's still got this. The money isn't enough. Somewhere within her, she has the need that she's got to get the plum assignment over Katie Couric as an adult, uh, you know, later in life, late in her career. This isn't a child. Is it that or is it her maybe trying to validate the fact that she's being paid so much by NBC and really hasn't produced anything? Like, is there maybe a part of her that's thinking, hey, I've done nothing here? Well, let me ask you guys this question. The idea of paying $23 million for anyone, given what happened to Matt Lauer in network television, are you guys down with that for the rest of the time? Like, is that a good investment for anybody to be making in anything? Like, how many of these people on network television are ratings movers in the 2018 when everyone's headed to Hulu and Netflix and I'm going to watch television on my time, not your time? That's a good question. Um, Man. But, I mean, I feel like that industry is... Am I wrong when I say with Matt Lauer, what he takes is that person? Am I wrong when I say Michael Strahan can have good media jobs and everything else, but the person who you hire to be your $30 million face of a network, that that person, now that Brian Williams is gone, like that, 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 right. that none right. of that stuff matters anymore. Well, like, what, what? That giving $23 million to Megyn Kelly is stupid, no matter who Megyn Kelly actually is. Yeah. What's the link, though, between salary and ratings? Like, is there an appreciable drop because of the Matt Lauer controversy? Like, since he's been canned, have they seen a ratings drop? I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. In fact, I think today's ratings were up right after it happened. I don't know what's happened since. Anderson Cooper is a guy. I don't know what he's being paid, but he is the face of a network. Um, and I'm certain he's been being paid a lot of is money. Is he? Is Anderson Cooper the face, or is it? Uh, I mean, Don it, Lemon will probably disagree, but so I think it's Wolf, Anderson Cooper. So, Wolf Blitzer so would have Jake an issue. Tapper. I, I think it's Anderson Cooper, though. I, I think know. you think CNN, and you think Anderson Cooper. I That's do. what you think. Uh, yeah, and I think there's three people Wolf that thinks? disagree. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm certain Wolf <laughs> disagrees. I'm certain of that. I think Aaron Burnett also disagrees. Oh, come on. I agree. Cooper. Uh, Guillermo, put it on the poll. Does Wolf Blitzer think Anderson Cooper is the face of CNN? It's a great question. <laughs> I love the idea of Wolf Blitzer sitting around being like this, Anderson. <laughs> Son of glory of Vanderbilt. My name's Wolf, man. You know how hard it is to, to not be a DJ in the 70s? To be a guy in news in 2018, and my name is Wolf. Especially in this day and age. We need an athlete named Wolf. 
Wolf Tell me Blitzer. I'm wrong. What a great name. Oh, my God. A, a football name. player? A pass rusher? Wait a minute. Wolf Blitzer. Tell me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is, that came, oh my God. Hold on. Let's think about it. That's not his real name, is it? Is that a stage name? His name is his name like Ed or Ernie? Oh, Wolf oh, Isaac Wolf. Blitzer. Yeah. That's Wolf, wait a minute. What's a better athlete name in the history of names than Wolf Blitzer? Like, that's a linebacker. Mm-hmm. That guy can play. Hey, Rogue Scout in Missouri, Stu Gott, get on the phone. To, yes. Get, get on the phone to the Packers. You found a linebacker, I'm Rogue out. Scout. I'm out here on the frozen tundra in Wisconsin, and I'm calling a coach. I'm calling Nick Saban. Nick, listen, I'm trying to get into the business. I'm a rogue agent. I've got a kid I'm watching right now. I've never seen anyone pa- rush the quarterback the way this kid <laughs> does, and his name is Wolf Blitzer. <laughs> Bill Parcells, real name is Dwayne. What? Ah, that's not true. What? That's not, not true. Even William. That's not true. <laughs> that's not true. What are you saying there? You blaspheme against the, the tuna. He went to high school. He switched high schools. One of the kids at the high school looked like him. His name was Bill. People confused him as Bill. He was like, mm, I like that name. Jack in it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Bill Parcells is actually Dwayne Parcells? Yeah. yeah Dwayne, That's what yeah. Dominique Foxworth is alleging. Kind of ruins the title, the two Bills. Yo, I tweeted that out. And Chris Mortensen, so I tweeted out people going crazy like, what? This is great. Chris Mortensen Retweeted, quote, quote, retweeted me and said, he's told that story a thousand times. I got oh, beef with Mort. Mort, Mort and oh, I got beef. Mort, that wait guy, a minute. That Hold guy. on a second. Oh, Hold on. Are you guys aware? Okay, this is twofold. First of all, did you? Thank you, Dominic Foxworth. Thank you, Dominic. You're welcome. Put on Bye. the poll, please, at Levitard Show. Did you know Bill Parcell's real name was Dwayne? Is it D U A N E or yep. is it D W Y Y A N E? Come on, like, come on, Stu. <laughs> I mean, come on, Dan. <laughs> like, like, hey, hey, big guy, big guy, big guy. Thank you. You know what his name is, big guy. All right, you know but, how he spells. Uh, right, He's not you. a W type of fella. All right, Did bye. you catch that, Dominique, earlier in the show when uh, when Stefan Diggs called me big guy? Did you also catch that he had no idea what my name was? That's he that's did. called making a joke, Dan. Yeah, that's how he knew the joke. No, I'm saying, did you also catch it in real time? I know the I, joke you're making. I sure did, handsome. All right, thank you, Chief. <laughs> Buddy. Right. There he is. Fella. Yeah. Jamie Foxx's real name is Eric. Homeboy. Is that right? Yeah. Jamie Foxx's name, real name is Eric? Yep. Yeah, Cochise. Do you guys know that Bill Belichick's real last name isn't Belichick? Get out of here. He oh. doesn't pronounce it Belichick. That's enough. Bruno Mars's real uh, name is Pete. <laughs> All right, we always enjoy the company of Ron McGill. If you want to talk to him, 786-456-4837 is the telephone number. A lot of our listeners have been talking about a meme that's making its way around the Internet, a hypothetical scenario that's been making its way through social media. Here is the scenario. You must pick two of these options to defend you while the rest are coming to kill you, okay? From the options, these are your options. Okay. You get 50 hawks, you get 10 crocodiles, you get three brown bears. You get seven Cape Buffalo. You get one hunter with a shotgun, unlimited ammo. One hunter with a shotgun. Oh, that's key. Unlimited ammo. Fifteen wolves. You can have 10,000 rats. You can have five gorillas, or you could have four lions. You're only allowed to pick two of those categories. Two are defending you. The rest are coming to kill you. Well, the rest are coming after you. Uh, shotgun, definitely. Unlimited amount of bullets. I mean, that ain't helping you against 10,000 rats. What if I choose the 10,000 rats? So now you've got it. So you're going with 10,000 rats and shotguns? I mean, and I want to. you're going to try and kill brown bears and crocodiles with your rats? With my shotgun. How about your 50 hawks? I'm going with hawks and 15 wolf blitzers. <laughs> So Ron McGill is with us now from Zoo Miami. Who pick? Who do you pick, Ron, from among well, that group? Sure. Well, the easy one, of course, is the hunter with unlimited ammo. Okay, that's the deadliest one. He's the one that's going to be take out the big thing. The second choice is difficult. It's between 15 wolves and 10,000 rats. I am going to go with the 15 wolves. Now, there's a couple of things you need to, to clarify here. First of all, what's the distance between the ones coming to kill you and the ones that are with you to defend you? Because... That needs to know the time. If you've got a hunter with unlimited bullets, I mean, how much time is he going to have to shoot? Okay, that's you know, if you if it's fifty yards between the two, I mean, how's that? How's that going? Because a hunter could take out three bears in three shots. Boom, boom, boom. You're done. Okay, that's easy. That's an easy run. 
Now, it's a little more difficult. It's like 50 hawks because they're coming out of the sky. But a hawk is not going to give you a fatal injury, okay? You're going to get cut up really badly. You're going to get a lot of puncture holes. But all you need to do is have the, 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 the hunter's going to take out a few of those hawks. But then the ones that hit you, you've got to take them, throw them to the ground so the wolves can get them right away. The wolves are going to work like a team. That's easy. With the, the scariest one here is the 10,000 rats. That's what I'm Again. saying. See, here's the thing. If I've got a hunter and I've got... Yes. These but, 15 but listen, wolves, Dan, and what's coming is 10,000 rats. I, I feel yeah, like I'm Dan, done. Dan, listen, listen, Dan, listen. you got a hunter with a shotgun. So a shotgun has got a shell that's going to spray out. Each shot's going to take out a bunch of rats and injure a bunch of other ones, okay? No rat is going to give you a fatal injury. What you got to do is you got to protect your carot- carotid artery, and you're going to have to have a peace of mind. Listen, this is not going to end well, okay? You're going to end up in the hospital. You're going to bleed. You're going to get all kinds of diseases and stuff. But you can survive it if you have the peace of mind to say, every time a rat hits, throw it to the ground. And the wolves are there. Boom, boom, boom. They're biting. And the guy's still and you just got to keep throwing, throwing the ground, throwing the ground, throwing the ground, and hope that as time goes that the wolves get them. The wolves can kill a bunch really quickly. It's one bite, kills a rat. And you got 15 wolves. So they're going at them. The rats are going to try to avoid the wolves. They're not going to come right at you right away. So those wolves create a circle around you. That works. The hunters, again, yeah, spraying yeah, the okay. shotgun. All right, but what about the crocodiles and the bears and the lions crocodiles and all easy. the crocodiles other bleep that's easy. falling out no, of the sky? Because now i got 50 because, hawks in my kitchen, listen, and all I've got is, is so fear in my heart. And listen to facts, okay? A crocodile crocodile, if there's any kind of distance between you and a crocodile, you can outmaneuver a crocodile. That's the easy one. Uh-huh. There's a hunter, just take them out. Okay? The Cape Buffalo, again, a hunter can take out two or three of those. That's right. Well, and, right then, but the bear is trying to kill me while I'm doing this to the crocodile, and he's got his friends with it. Oh, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are you saying? You're saying all the rest are coming at you at once? Yes. Yes, all of them. Everybody's Everything. coming. Everybody. Which part oh, no, of you're not? Wait a minute. You're dead. All you're, dead. Them. you're dead. You're dead. You're dead, Dan. Dan, that's the dumbest you... meme I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Wait, that's so there's the no combination in which you're safe? There's no combination. There is no combination. Everyone else is coming. You're dead. No, Dan, you're dead. That's a stupid meme. That's the dumbest <laughs> meme in the world. It didn't sound you're so dead. stupid for the chance. last four minutes. It sounded amazing. Uh, you're in the middle of it just yeah, going, hey, you, bear. No, no, wait, hey, wait, bear. Wait, wait, you're, you, said, you, you quack. You're in the middle of it with but, instead of a shotgun. You just want to be in front of the bear waving your arms going, hey, bear. Hey, bear. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Are you done? Mike, you're on. <laughs> Mike, you're on with Ron McGill. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Ron. Are belly buttons strictly the trait of mammals? Um, I bel- no, no, they're not. As a matter of fact, because like crocodiles, for instance, come out of an egg and they will have a yolk sac attached, but they have an umbilicus attached to it. It becomes very, very well hidden as the animal gets older, but it does have a belly button. So even even birds, even reptiles do have a yolk sac that attaches to their abdominal, uh, you know, cavity that gives them food that as they, old, as they get older, that, that comes off and disappears. But they all have belly buttons, so to speak. Brian, you're on with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Go ahead. Hey, Ron. Uh, first of all, went to Zoo Miami the other day. I love what you guys are doing to the place. Uh, question, my wife is nine, well, eight months pregnant. She's miserable. Is there any other animal out there that changes their mood when they get really pregnant? Because she's crazy. Yeah, well, a lot of animals do. A lot of animals uh, get quite moody, hormones do a lot of things to a lot of different animals. So your wife isn't alone. It's not just a human trait. It's a, it's a trait throughout the animal kingdom, especially in mammals, as these animals get more and more into their, into their uh, um, pregnancy. Uh, the hormones start changing their attitudes, changing their appetites, changing their reaction to different things. So don't feel alone. Uh, Robert, you're on with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Hey, Ron. My daughter has a uh, male guinea pig named Fat Chris. I want to get her another guinea pig. Should I get a male guinea pig and name it Guillermo or a female and name it Allison? <laughs> don't get a female because then you're going to have a ton of them, and you don't need that. Uh, and the male sometimes will fight, so you're going to have to have an acclimation period there. It's a kind of experimentation. But if you're going to have to get another one, get another male or get two females because male and female, you're just going to have a lot of guinea pigs. Trust me. Eddie C., you're on with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Go ahead. Hey, Ron, I have a butterfly garden, and I now also have uh, a couple of iguanas that are digging little tunnels under my driveway, and I think they keep eating the caterpillars right before they cocoon. Is there something I can do without killing the iguanas to deter them? You know, there's a lot of these homemade remedies, so, so to speak. I don't know of any of them that really work. A lot of them are just these urban myths. 
Uh, unfortunately, iguanas can be very destructive, not in just eating the plants and eating different things around the plants, but like you say, uh, tunneling under your driveway, causing things, ca- causing all kinds of erosion problems. That's why I try to tell people, listen, folks, these animals do not belong here. You know, I've dedicated my life to protecting animals, but at the end of the day, they are destructive, they are doing damage to our natural environment, and I'm in favor of humanely dispatching them. I know it sounds terrible to say, but that's the bottom line. We've got to look at the general health of the environment and wow. the place that they don't belong. Wait a belong. minute. You are, you'd think we should get rid of iguanas. I do. Absolutely. I did not I know that. That's no, shocking. No, because Ron's been saying this. I used to complain that I had two iguanas in my backyard. One of them almost attacked one of my kids. And I remember Ron saying the same thing no, back then no, when I asked him about I, it. Yeah, I just, I've never. Yeah, but the difference is that Stu got, you sometimes listen to me. Dan never does. Right? I'm, I'm just <laughs> stunned that you are calling for the eradication of iguanas in South Florida. I am. Wow. All right. Very good. Shocking. Bold stance. I love it. Paul, you're on with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Go ahead. Hey, Ron. If Jaws was about a walrus instead of a shark, would we be just as scared as walruses as we currently are of sharks? Thanks. <laughs> That's a good question, man. <laughs> I mean, they are. They got the whiskers, question, the yeah. fangs. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The whiskers, the fangs. And that also, the, you know, occasionally, uh, you know, sharks do kill people. But, uh, but the tusks. It's a fine. Imagine putting the music behind the walrus, though. Don't, uh, yeah, yeah. don't uh, imagine. Yeah. I think, I think yeah, he's right. Yeah. yeah, I think he might be right. Fine, All right, let's look at this fine. video. What am I being fined for? What am I being fined for? <laughs> you call them Probably fangs. being mean to me. Okay. And for being mean. Fangs, they're tusks, and you have another one from earlier. I forget. It's just $20. Though. All right, so <laughs> let's go ahead, uh, Ron, and okay, here we go. Look play at by play oh, of today's look at video. This. It's a rat taking a... Sh- uh, are you serious? Oh, oh no. my God! This rat's actually enjoying giving himself a shot. Look, he's rubbing under his arm. That can't he's be right. A soapy that's that, that is amazing. No, that's oh special effects. Is that real? That can't be that's real. A, that's, that's, that's a phenomenal. That's, that's, real. A, that's a rat taking a shower like an old man. Like an old man looking under on the arms and rubbing his belly and lathering all up. Oh and all God. he needs to do is sing. He just needs to sing. That can't be, be real. What is that? Am I being? Well, you know, rats are pretty intelligent. Am I being fooled by a fake animal again? How they get? How they get footage of me in the shower? <laughs> I don't think so, Dan. If somebody did that fake, they need a big job in Hollywood because those special oh. effects are amazing. Wow. Those believe- that's for that. You need to you need to send that out. That's a fantastic video. You're seeing that that is simply a rat that oh. is taking a shower. It's cleaning in all the nether regions. No, and, 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 and it's standing on its two hind legs like a human being. It's so it's standing up and it's going underneath its arms and it's oh doing the back. No, but no, but it is scrubbing and, vigorously the area between its legs. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want any jock itch. That's great. All right. Very good. See you later, Rock. <laughs> Take care, yeah, guys. Great video. It really is. You can listen to the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio. And you can watch on ESPNU.